Using just the sun and some special paper, you can create beautiful, one-of-a-kind works. Hello, and welcome to Beyond the Classroom. I'm Kendra, and today we will be making cyanotypes, or sun prints. Let's start by going over our materials. You'll need some cyanotype paper. If you registered for a kit, it will come in a manila envelope just to protect it from any light. You'll also need some acrylic, a pan with water, and whatever you want to place on your paper to make your print. I have this really nice selection of plants over here that I'm going to choose from. Before we start making our cyanotypes, let's talk about the history of this process. It was invented in 1841 and was most commonly used by architects to create something that you might be familiar with, blueprints. They would draw their designs on thin paper and ink, place their designs on a cyanotype paper, and just leave them in the sun. This was a quick, easy, and efficient way of making copies of their work. Remember, 1841 was many, many years before the age of the copy machine and the desktop printer. Now that you know a little bit about the history of this process, let's go ahead and get started. You will need a sunny day to do this. So if it's raining outside or just really cloudy, wait a couple days until the sun comes back out. The first thing you'll need to do is grab whatever object you want to make your print, place it on the paper, and then place your acrylic on top. Once you have it all put together, you just need to set it in the sun for two minutes. If it's really nice outside, you can just set it outside as long as it gets direct sunlight. So don't set it in a shady place like underneath a tree. If it's a little bit chilly outside, you can even set it in a windowsill. All that matters is that there is direct sunlight hitting the page. While we wait, let's talk about the process that's taking place. The paper is coated in photosensitive chemicals that react to ultraviolet rays from the sun. Ultraviolet rays, or UV rays, are a form of electromagnetic radiation. Radio waves, visible light, and x-rays are also on the spectrum of radiation. Humans cannot see UV light, but we do react to it in the form of sunburns. And UV light also reacts to chemicals found in nature, like those on this paper. The reason the paper is bluish in color is because it's coated in an iron-based compound called Berlin Green. Berlin Green dissolves in water, it's water-soluble, but when UV light hits it, it reacts in a way that changes it to a substance called Prussian blue, which does not dissolve in water. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's go ahead and grab our prints. Once you have your print, take off the acrylic and gently put it in the pan with your water. The area that we covered with our object was shielded from the UV light and should still be that Berlin green. As we wash the paper, the Berlin green will dissolve and we'll be left with a really nice silhouette of our image. The areas that were left exposed to UV light have now changed from Berlin green to Prussian blue, and the Prussian blue will not wash away. Once you have your sun print washed, be sure to lay it flat or hang it to dry. Once it's dry, it'll look similar to our final product here. I hope you enjoyed this session of Beyond the Classroom and are inspired to make even more sun prints with the extra materials in your kits. If you're interested in finding out more about how light works or chemical reactions, be sure to check out some of these items. Building Blocks of Science, Light, by Joseph Midthen and Samuel Hitti. Black Holes Explained, by James Negus. High School Physics Unlocked and High School Chemistry Unlocked, both edited by the Princeton Review. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.